cool things about Ember Data is how it lets you connect your models with relationships. In this episode, we'll go over the belongs to and has many relationships. So in your models, your DS models, you can define relationships just like you can attributes. So here we're defining the has many relationship of team membership to the team membership's property. Then in the team membership model, we're having the monster property belonging to the monster model. And so it's going to be linking to one monster model, and it'll also be linking to one user. And then in the user model, it's going to be linking to many team memberships. Now, what this lets you do is it lets you have these relationships without worrying a whole lot about the underlying how Ember Data is fetching it from the server. It lets you act almost as if the stuff is already there. And then here you can be like, all right, let's get the current user. Let's get all the team memberships on it. And you don't have to worry as much about the underlying structure. I mean, you do a little bit because as you can see in this example, we're checking to see if the memberships have already landed before we do the map by. But if we reference these relationships in a template, then Ember would take care of that for us. It's worth noting that if the model names correspond to the property names, then you don't actually have to state the model name as an argument. You can just leave it blank. However, if the model name doesn't correspond with the property name, you do need to have the model name as the first argument. For example, if we had favorite monster on the user, then it would be a belongs to, and we would have to specify that it's a monster since there is no favorite monster model. There's also some terminology that you should know that people use when talking about relationships. So here we have a team member relationship and we have many team members. And in team members, well, the team membership belongs to one user. We call that a one-to-many relationship. You can also have a one-to-one -one relationship by having two models that have two belongs to relationships that connect. And you can also have a many-to-many -many relationship by having two models that have has many relationships that connect. So for both belongs to and has many, there are two optional arguments that you can put into the second parameter. So first you have the name, then you have the optional arguments. The first optional argument is async, and that lets Ember Data know whether this relationship is going to be synchronous or asynchronous. Now, it was false by default before Ember Data 2.0, but now in Ember Data 2.0, it's true by default, and you have to manually turn it off if you want it to be purely synchronous. And in general, you're going to want it to be async. Let me show you what synchronous versus asynchronous means. But before we do that, we'll have to get into looking at this payload. So this is using the active model adapter, but the general lesson that I'm going to show you should carry over. So here in this monsters call, it gives us both monsters and team memberships. And here in the monsters, in the team membership IDs property, it gives us an array of team membership IDs. For this, this could be both synchronous and asynchronous because we're including the team memberships. However, with the team memberships, notice we have the monster ID and the user ID. These are both asynchronous by default, but it would be okay for the monster to be synchronous because this monster is included. But if we had the user as synchronous, then that would cause a problem because we haven't included any users in this payload. So if it's synchronous, it has to be included in the payload. If it's asynchronous, then it can be fetched whenever you need it not necessarily in the same payload. So that's the async option. Now let's talk about the inverse option. So the inverse option is useful if you have two models that have multiple types of relationships to each other. So the example I give in the documentation is that in the comments, a comment can have different relationships to different posts. And then the post wants all the comments of a certain type. So it only wants the comments where this post is their red post. 
This example is a little bit nonsensical, but hopefully you can get the idea. Let's look at a possibly more useful example from our model state explorer. So here on our state model, we have the parent relationship and the children relationship. So the parent it belongs to another state and the inverse is children. And for the children, it has many states and the inverse is parent. So it's not just one model related to another model. It's one model related to itself. So this helps us keep track of how they're related. Now notice that we also have a third thing that wasn't in the documentation, default value. And that'll just set what it is before you get anything back or if it's null. So that's our exploration of the belongs to and has many methods, the relationships in Ember data. In this week's pro episode, we'll be going over more of this code that I used to create the model state demonstration. It was introduced a couple episodes back, and now I'm going to show you some of the cool things I did while making it. I hope to see you then.